The first lecture will be given by the laureate in advanced technology, Dr. Toyoki Kunitake. Dr. Kunitake, would you please come to the stage? Before we have his lecture, we will now introduce his profile using the screen in the front. Dr. Toyoki Kunitake was born in 1936 in the city of Kurume in Fukuoka Prefecture as the eldest of the three brothers. This is a picture taken together with um, his mother and uh, his brothers. Standing in the back is Dr. Kunitake. His mother loved to read, and she taught her children the joy of reading. This is a picture taken when he was in the ninth grade, uh, taken together with his uh, father. His father ran a grocery store, store and uh, he was looking very much forward to have uh, his children enter the universities. Uh, Dr. Kunitake went on uh, to major applied chemistry at the engineering department of Kyushu University. Second person from the left is Dr. Kunitake. Uh, he became awakened to the joy of research while at university and uh, uh, deter was determined to make uh, research and development his lifetime job. After completing his uh, master's studies at Kyushu University, he went on to obtain the doctoral degree at the University of Pennsylvania in the United States, after which uh, he became postdoctoral fellow at uh, California Institute of Technology. And uh, he became assistant professor with the engineering department of Kyushu University, his alma mater. Our cellular membranes uh, are made of uh, bilayer membranes. Bilayer membranes have hydrophilic and hydrophobic uh, parts. It is an elongated uh, molecules uh, facing each other and uh, lining up in two clean layers. Individual molecules will come together spontaneously to form a regular assembly structure, which is called self-organization. And this is a phenomenon only seen in the biomembranes, or at least it was thought that way. In 1977, Dr. Kunitake, for the first time in the world, succeeded in synthesizing the bio bilayer membrane synthesizing lipid uh, molecules uh, having sim more simple structures than biomembranes. When dissolved in water, the self-organization phenomenon was seen uh, to uh, create the so-called uh, uh, bilayer membrane, similar to cellular membrane. Dr. Kunitake also worked on the methodology of immobilizing uh, the uh, bilayer membranes so that it will be applicable. and. Uh, he has come up with uh, the uh, chemistry of uh, molecular organization, working on self-organization and the immobilization uh, technologies. He has uh, opened uh, new avenues for the development of uh, polymer material science and uh, supramolecular chemistry, leading to new developments of uh, technologies and materials uh, which are applied uh, widely and commercialized. Currently, he is the president of Ikita Kyushu Foundation for the Advancement of Industry, Science and Technology, giving his effort uh, to engage in industry academia partnership and uh, corporate uh, uh, supporting activities. He is also involved in national projects. He's very busy indeed. To the young people, he gives the following advice. There is no limit to knowledge or technology. Please become a humble optimist to create the future world.
Dr. Kunitake is looking forward uh, to look around uh, the beautiful city of uh, uh, Kyoto, uh, full of uh, long standing history and culture, together with his wife. Dr. Kunitake calls himself an optimist by nature. Today, he will tell us how he has become fascinated by research, which is indeed the activities of solving mysteries and why he is still in the field of research. The road I have taken, spellbound by the wonders of research, is the title of his talk. Dr. Kunitake, please. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. I was awarded with Kyoto Prize this year, and I was given the opportunity to talk to you on my life. This is valuable opportunity for me. Thank you very much indeed for coming. In the introduction of profile, it was explained that I am the optimistic person. From outside, perhaps you can find that characteristic of optimistic aspects. Everybody says so, and I think so too. I'm not sure whether that is related to me, but I have read Dr. Inamori's book. Dr. Inamori says, well, I think uh, those are the principles for the business, but uh, think optimistically, plan pessimistically, and execute it in optimistic way. I quite agree with this. And I have been a researcher, therefore, my duty helps me to come up with the ideas or think. So think optimistically. That's the key word for me. And I think that is why I might have been rather successful in research. I have spent half or more than half of my life for research. Often young people ask me questions. Why? Did you decide to become researcher? How can we become researcher? What is interesting aspects in research? I think those are the questions frequently asked from younger people. But I really don't know the clear cut answer. Usually, colleagues said that since from their early childhood, they got interested in the living organism or family members or academic members, or they was amazed with the mystery of stars and universe. But in my own case, as I will introduce to you in my lecture, I didn't have any environment of my childhood where somebody would tell me, why don't you become researcher? There were no such a people. But in the university, in the lab, I was attracted to the chemical research, and I just continued to do so with enjoyment. So in my retrospect, I think that we don't have the clear memory of the decision in the small childhood. We had the different things or events or the thoughts. So younger children often ask the question, but I usually answer to those questions. You don't have to hurry in making decisions. Eventually, you will find the way for your life. I was born in 1936 on February the 26th which was the special date for Japan. That's it, the, what we call 226 incident or coup d'etat. In those days, 
Japanese economy was suffering from recession, especially in the countryside for agriculture. And Japan was unstable. And young army officers attempted to make a coup d'etat because those days party politics should be responsible. And Prime Minister of that cabinet was killed with the bullets. And it says that now the, we should attack the villain and we should respect the emperors. So that was the coup d'etat slogan with the young officers of army. But it was failed, therefore. We didn't have the change of the political system of Japan. But I was born on just day. And I wouldn't say that I have the destiny, but I think that uh, some change or the attempt to change has been the attempts throughout the human being's history. Therefore, when I was a small children. I had a way of thinking that we could make change for the situation given, although that's the current situation. We had World War II, and our city of Kurume was attacked with the airy bombing, and many other places of Japan had the bombing and city center was completely burned. And this was immediately after the war, and this was a summertime. So nearly naked, but we were having just fun around 10 years, 11 years. This is me as introduced. So as you look at here, there was the fire preventive device, or we store the water reserve for the fire with the bombing, no pavement on the roads. But still, we were just having fun playing outside on these roads among kids. And I graduated from the elementary school and junior high and senior high. I myself was rather shy, and my growth was rather slow, psychologically or physically. You may not see, but this is me in a junior high school together with my friends. But if we look at me, even still today, but I think that when we have the gymnastics, we have the cue according to the height. Usually, I was the shortest or the second shortest boy. And when we have a conversation with the children, I felt rather behind. Two years or three years difference was what I felt. My friends was as if they were adults. And this picture was taken in senior high school. I joined the senior high, which was a very interesting school. That was the high school attached to the Kurume University. Now the very high-ranked high school. But when I joined it, that was just created actually second year after the establishment. If you are old generation, you will know this is not the school building that used to be used for the army. And war was over, and there were no soldiers, and the building was vacant. So therefore, that was transversed to the, transformed to the school building. And the land bank was seen. And that was the place of the ammunition. But still, we were playing around outside or doing the sport. One thing about this high school was that liberal atmosphere was dominant. After the war, new education system was tried to be introduced, new 
teachers try to emphasize a foreign language. I learned English and also German. So two foreign languages were given in our classes. We studied those for three years. Usually we learn two to three years when we have the good memory because of youth, then the verb tense or change, all those were memorized as a road memorization and Goethe's poem was it possible for me. So I think that the younger generation have the great potential. We can absorb any of the things in short time. This school was just established and we didn't have the full range of the teachers for social studies or for sciences. We didn't have the, I mean, dedicated high school student uh, teachers. But this was attached to the university. Therefore, now professors of the chemistry wearing the white coat, professors came to give us the classes. And we were quite impressed with the white coat. It was the good, exciting image that I still remember. And for social studies, the doctors had their research for the Vikings of the Seto Indian Sea. Very interesting, but specialized theme was given. And for economics, high level of the economics was given at the high senior high school. We didn't have the any pretty occupied knowledge. So in retrospect, stretched level of that class was given. That was very, very meaningful. I didn't mean that that is useful for the entrance exam to the college, but the fundamentally, we have raised a curiosity for academic world. I am truly grateful for the opportunity given to me in my life to get high level of the pure education. Now, I became th the third grade student of the senior high school. As I told you, I didn't understand the world affairs, and psychologically, spiritually, I was immature. I didn't think so well as to the way for me to go. I didn't have any specific dream for the occupation. But in the third year of the senior high school, we have to select the classes, whether we will choose the faculty of science or literature. A decision was asked, and I had to make a decision. And in my mind, teacher, Mr. Seda, was in charge of our class. He graduated from the Japanese literature of Tokyo University, and he was a very young teacher, and he gave excellent lessons. And I enjoyed those classes. So many students of my classmates made a great influential. So some of my friends went to Tokyo University to study the Japanese literature teachers' impact is so large to the younger generation. I enjoyed the Japanese literature, or I got interested in biology. So medicine would be interesting, but in medicine, maybe basic medicine would be more attractive, or maybe economics could be also interesting. So I couldn't find anything specific. That means I wanted to become any of those things. No specific dream. And my father finally told me, because he was running a small grocery store, and he wanted me to have the solid technique to earn money. And in neighborhood, there was a stable business of family running the pharmacy. So my father recommended the faculty of 
pharmacy, but I didn't think that that was so much interesting to sell drugs in all of my life. So I insisted, or I created the logic that, well, the pharmacology or pharmacist is very closer to the applied chemistry. So I will go to the faculty of engineering to study the applied chemistry. But as a background, I had the literature-oriented interest. So I didn't study seriously the sciences. In order to enter into the science faculty, usually we require to do the test for the math and physics. I majored rather biology and chemistry so far, in a hurry, I started to study physics. At the beginning, I got the miserable score, but I pulled myself together with full length, and I managed to learn the physics, and I successfully entered into the Kyushu University. But in those days, there were no big buildings. There were lots of the branches, and there was one branch of building that I was able to walk to that place in Kurume City. It is very convenient for me, and that was the background decision why I tried to enter the Faculty of Engineering of Kyushu University. But it was very lucky for me in my life when I entered the university. In that year, my father passed away. So my mother and my younger brothers were with me, and we had a critical moment as to what to do. But I was able to stay in my family, assisting my family business, and also studying at the university, I managed to continue studying. If I joined the distant university, perhaps probably I would have ended up with the store owner of a convenience store or drugstore. So usually, in retrospect, in life, Several events are giving us the linkages to the current occupation. And this is the picture at the Kyushu University. We have the word of the poly condensation of the polyester. You have the jacket of textile or shirts. Polyester are often used as a material that was just introduced in those days for textile. In general, polymer were developed in many applications. So that was the prime time of the research at the engineering faculty in those days. And I did also the research for body condensation. This is cyclopentazine ion polymerization. This is one residual included in the oil. And in order to effectively utilize, we got interested in this research. Professor Akiyoshi's lab and Associate Professor Aso's lab, those were the labs and the colleagues, and it's me. This looks like a pure white coat, but we didn't clean or wash. So usually after two to three months, in the experimental lab, the atmosphere had the dirty environments. Uh, the room itself was dusty, and white coats got dust. So the appearance of experimental lab was completely different from today's. So 3K made it dark or dirty and hard, and 
those were the working situation. We got the great influence from the professors, professors Akiyoshi and Associate Professor Aso. Those are the direct mentors to me. And especially Professor Akiyoshi, at the beginning of the 1955, he said that the Japanese university should change their educational system, especially the system from the graduate school in the Western countries. Usually, apprenticeship was the case for Japan. We got disciples from one professor, and we were just work hard for the professor's research. And now, with the reflection of the Japanese educators, Japanese government tried to reform the education. We have the good system right now, but in those days, we didn't have those. And Professor Akiyoshi was a brave person that he wanted to create the new type of the graduate school. So he thought that the, he should send young researchers to the United States because in the United States, graduate school education was full-fledged and wide spectrum experiences and knowledge were able to be given to the American students. Therefore, he sent young generation to the United States to absorb them. In Japan, apprenticeship could give the learning in delving into the depth. However, no wide spectrum knowledge was given at the Japanese university. So I went to the United States because of the initiative taken by Professor Akiyoshi. And experience of studying abroad was suggested to me. That was out of heaven. I didn't expect that type of life because I had a rather difficult family situation and I thought that I should go out to the business to earn money to support my family. However, that offer was given from professor and I thought, well, and in the United States, if I could study, then I need the scholarship. And perhaps the expense for living was able to be given, and that's wonderful. And a unique scholarship was established. In those days, the founder of the Teijin made the Kumura scholarship. That was very generous scholarship that was just created. And in those days, that was rather generous scholarship. Plenty of money was given as a support, and I tried to apply for that. And Fulbright, scholarship was well known, and in total, uh, several tens of students were able to get grants. And I tried that exam, and I was a reserve. However, I got some support from Fulbright for travel. That means that air ticket was given. Because we did have the one dollar was 360 yen. Japanese yen was very weak in those days. It was very difficult for me to generate the money to go to the United States. Anyway, getting the support of the scholarship, I went to the United States to study abroad. And I joined the chemical laboratory and studied many things. And in the two years and a half, I finished those. So the last one year was the Celtic in the West Coast. So I moved from West Coast, uh, East Coast to West Coast to join the Celtic. And in different places, the contents of the experiences could also change drastically. But change is important. That means a new experience will transform our thoughts. Different thoughts are precious experience, which I was exposed in the graduate school. 
I got a wider spectrum chemistry as a knowledge, but out of it, we had a good foundation. Every month, general knowledge was tried in the exam. And also, the exam were given to us with the advanced level of the research title in the applied chemistry, how to learn the production process was the focus in Japan, but in Pennsylvania University, we got this fundamental knowledge in wider spectrum. I think Japanese universities are changing to the U.S. model. And in Caltech, in California, how to produce the polymer was the basis, but something new was the attempts. How living organisms are related to the chemistry. So therefore, it was the research area closer to, closer to biochemistry. That was very precious experience to broaden my knowledge as to the methodology or the knowledge. By the way, I got a lot of good experience in the United States. I made a lot of good friends. This is me, and on the right, Nobel Prize winners for chemistry in 2012, Professor Eiichi Negishi at the Purdue, Purdue University. In fact, we were colleagues in the university in Philadelphia in the different lab, but we frequently enjoyed talking. This picture was taken last June. This was the strange threat of fate. Professor Negishi won the Nobel Prize, and he offered a lot of proposal how to make a new synthetic functional materials or polymers. And that research was emphasized in his opinion. Therefore, ACT-C project was created by Japanese government that started as a project under Japan Science and Technology Agency. And in that ADCC project, <laughs> Professor Negishi is the responsible person for those research, and I was a member of those. And we re encountered, but we used to know each other 50 years ago in the United States, and now we are working hard again with each other, so our fates are really mysterious and interesting. That's what we talk to each other. We talked about the graduate school, and I finished that graduate school. And for the new graduate school of Japanese University, I went into the position of the associate professor. This picture was taken in 1964. I don't remember when it was taken, very old picture, but underneath there was a calendar with me. This uh, female talent is the Haruko Taniguchi. Underneath on a weekday, or we make assumption for the year, usually the calendar dates are judged to be in 1964. So this was the Haruko Wanibuchi, the quite uh, beautiful actress with it, in 1964. And I was now in the position to promote the education in graduate school. It was very stimulative and a good experience for me. If different countries, the case, 
The system should be different. American system cannot work out well in Japan. And we made a try and an error. And then the recent trendy discussion-based teaching was introduced. Discussion or debate was emphasized. In 1964, we already made that emphasis. And that has been the tradition in Kyushu University. Therefore, for the education, I spent so much energy of mine for education and for research aspects. As I said, I wanted to find something new, not only making the new polymer, but I wanted to try a totally new field. In fact, in the Celtic era, I made a research for enzymes. Therefore, I wanted to do the research something connected to the enzyme, but the same research in California doesn't make any sense. Therefore, how to make use of my background in order to explore the new possibility of theme? I thought and thought, and one clue of the research is this, biomimetics. Sorry, getting me derailed, but this was given from the Professor Shimomura. But we often use the word biomimetics. Bio is the biology. Mimetics is mimicking the biology or mimicking the mysterious and the wonderful mechanism should be mimicked by artificial methods. And we have lots of technologies available. Examples are here, not chemistry. This is the biology-oriented biomimetics. We have lots of living organisms in the nature, and those mechanism of action can be utilized for the devices, nature mimicking, for example. As you can read, we look at the dragonfly, albatross, golden eagle, so air condition was improved. How to control the airflow? Well, the birds in the natural environment are the genius. And then we can come up with this idea of the structure for fans. So air conditioning with reference to the living organism was invented energy saving or the noise can be reduced. Of course, cost for production is another issue. Therefore, this cannot be immediately commercialized. However, function itself can be found in nature. And from those mechanisms, new technology are emerged. On top, those are the reduction of the air resistance, learning from dragonfly. So cross flow fan is applied. Smooth flow of wind is utilized to reduce the noise. This is the trendy word of the biomimetics that has been widening its spectrum of the research. What we did in those days was the on molecular level. This looks somewhat complicated. This is one enzyme, trypsin. In your gut or stomach, uh, there is this enzyme in all of you, and uh, it degrades uh, uh, proteins uh, and breaks them down to uh, amino acids uh, to be absorbed. And this is, we, we have uh, been able to elucidate the structure uh, of uh, proteins about at around 1960 or so, and uh, that uh, there is a long chain of amino acids uh, being folded uh, very finely uh, to sh come up with a uh, 3D structure from around 1960s, specific knowledge based on molecule has uh, come to tell us about the structure. And uh, when you, and there is the uh, active site of the enzyme, and 
several functions are gathered here precisely, and by having uh, them work together in a collaborate way, uh, the uh, reactions and functions uh, of degrading amino acids, for instance, uh, will be made possible which cannot be done artificially. So this type of stereostructure or the active site may be gathered and lined up in the polymer. And we thought this perhaps could be synthesized uh, when I was engaging with the research in the mid-60s at Kyushu University. This was still a difficult challenge, and uh, only after some years it was realized. But copolymer has two units uh, bound randomly, and we use the copolymers uh, to come up with a chemistry of enzyme model. This is, is only a rough model yet, and uh, we thought of this as one biomimetic chemistry approach, starting from Kyushu University. And this was the starting point uh, for my further research. However, such a polymer would be used uh, in a dissolved way, but uh, long chains uh, will be not taking a good shape in the solution, and therefore we needed something that would have a better shape uh, leading to a better functions, and uh, we thought about how this could be done. And uh, we used not floppy chains, but uh, we tried to think about uh, something more rigid. And ultimately, uh, we have uh, come to the conclusion that a uh, 3D structure like this was not uh, possible to achieve. And I think uh, that challenge still remains with us even today. In order to come closer to living organisms, uh, we needed to think about each molecule and how to assemble them so that uh, all in all they would be able to work together in a better way. And uh, so we decided not to work with a linear type of a polymer but some other shape. And uh, we tried to uh, research on the membrane. This is uh, one model of a biomembrane. This is a eukaryote. And uh, the cell is made up of this uh, hollow bag, so to speak. And within this uh, bag and container, there are different uh, intracellular organs, like mitochondria, which produces energy. ATP synthesis is done there. And also, there is the DNA and the DNA synthesis. The ribosome, ribosome oh, uh, synthesizes uh, uh, proteins, and lysosome is the cleanup factory. So there are different uh, functions uh, found within the cell. So this, the shape of the membrane surrounding the cell is very thin, uh, only in the order of uh, two mole molecule thickness, or several nanometers in thickness. Three, uh, uh, two, uh, one, two meters or three meters uh, um, of uh, uh, one billion. So it is very thin indeed. And the nucleus and the ribosome also utilizes the shape of the membrane uh, to carry out the certain functions. To be more specific, Cellular membranes are made of different uh, compounds, 
And let's take uh, the human erythrocyte uh, membrane. The major phospholipids are shown here. There are the fatty acids, long chain. This is a schematic, which is connected here. And uh, this is the hydrophilic portion. This is the lipophilic portion, not uh, dissolving uh, into water. So it's like a soap uh, or amphiphilic substance, which is uh, uh, hydrophilic as well as lipophilic. And uh, these are all lined up in an orderly way. This is also schematic, one example. So the very precisely made uh, living organisms in those days, it was said uh, that uh, uh, such a uh, biomembrane uh, structure uh, will be formed only through biophospholipids uh, having very complex molecular structures. That was the understanding of the time. As against this common view, uh, we were engaging in research of creating something new, and therefore uh, we uh, decided to work on something more simple. And uh, this is the phospholipid, and uh, there is uh, the phosphatidyl uh, choline, uh, the uh, hydrophilic portion. There's, there's the hydrophobic portion when you dissolve this in water, this part uh, will become water. But simplifying this, uh, this uh, there will be two chains uh, that are hydrophobic and uh, the part that is left, which is hydrophilic. And uh, we saw how the molecules would organize itself. So this is a hollow sphere, as you can see here, by ha working with these uh, simple compounds, uh, we found out uh, that uh, such a synthetic bilayer membranes uh, could be made uh, without having to use something more complicated, which means that if we design things better, we might uh, come up with something of a better quality even. And based on that thought, Although the molecular structure is different, uh, we have come up with related substances in the order of hundreds or several hundreds uh, utilizing various shapes of uh, materials and uh, characteristics of the materials. And uh, we have uh, been able to identify uh, the organization of the molecules. To be simple here, there is a one hydrophilic group and there is the connector modules and there are the tail modules and spacer modules. And when you work with these modules, we were able to create the molecule. We might keep the same hydrophilic group, but we would uh, utilize the so-called rigid segment, and this would also work. We might uh, also work with two hydrophilic uh, groups uh, with uh, the rigid uh, segment uh, placed in between, uh, or uh, we would have uh, four tails, uh, for example, in connected to uh, one uh, hydrophilic Philic uh, group uh, and so forth, we worked on uh, different variations uh, and ultimately we uh, have uh, uh, been able to create uh, more than several hundred. And uh, uh, in specific membrane forming uh, cases, 
things that have been done quite successfully. But, of course, uh, not all of them are fit, uh, biologically speaking. There are many synthetic materials, at least, uh, and uh, that was identified. Uh, if not, uh, all of them can be used uh, in the biological sense. As a matter of fact, uh, self-organization is a term that I used. And this is a very broad concept. Uh, it is not applied only for molecules and chemistry. For example, in tornadoes, the air uh, is uh, uh, going up uh, in the sky, uh, which is uh, one way of organizing uh, as well. So it is a way of self-organization. And uh, uh, the leaf, uh, the veins of the leaf uh, also spread out uh, to support, supply water throughout the leaf till the tip of the leaf. This is also a way of organization. So organization is a very broad-based concept. And, uh, of course, uh, that applies uh, to living organisms, but uh, even without uh, the life, it can be used uh, for uh, in the field of uh, materials that are inorganic in nature as well. Perhaps uh, this goes uh, too much into detail, but uh, by designing uh, uh, molecules, uh, we are able uh, to have different shapes, like rods and uh, tubes and others. Speaking from this, we have uh, had uh, different developments uh, working on the organization to come up with uh, uh, different materials. Uh, most of these uh, researches have not been done uh, by ourselves but by other researchers. The question is how to organize the different uh, molecules based on the particular need. And that uh, starting point perhaps might have been um, where we have made our contribution. Finally, in view of time, let me end with this. Or some, a few slides. I was asked to give a message to the young people why I was able to uh, keep on engaging in research. Why did I not get tired? So why is research so exciting? To be interested in one particular topic, and as you go more deeper, deeper in that uh, research topic, you will be able to cover greater expanse uh, by uh, uh, developing that interest more broadly. But I believe uh, there are two uh, things that I take joy with uh, in research. One is the sense of achievement. When you uh, climb Mount Everest, uh, the first person who have done that probably had a great sense of achievement. Uh, researchers uh, try to be the first in reaching some achievement or outcome. There is a great deal of competition. And if you are the first uh, to reach the summit, you will have a great sense of achievement. I think that's one element. Another is research is not linear in a sense. You will hit various obstacles and perhaps you have to make deroutes and take other paths to reach your goal. So there is the mystery solving uh, excitement. Even though you do not know where you're going, uh, when you hit the things here and there and uh, meet obstacles uh, and clear those obstacles, uh, ultimately you might uh, reach your goal. And so the mountain climbing and uh, the mystery solving, these are the two exciting elements uh, 
for people engaging in research. Another is uh, what do I expect of the uh, next generation of researchers? We hear nowadays uh, that uh, people uh, tend to think uh, science and technology has uh, reached uh, a certain limit and we might not need anything uh, new to add on to it. But I must, must say, the more you research and study, the more questions you have. In other words, there is no limit to what you research. To be more specific, you think about the Earth, or you think about the uh, mankind, we create we have the ability to create large amount of energy, and based on that, uh, we are living uh, pleasant uh, lifestyles. However, on the other hand, uh, we are seeing the uh, global warming uh, and uh, the CO2 generation, which is a big challenge for humankind nowadays. So, so there is a cost to be paid uh, in uh, developing science and technology. In other words, new challenges come one after another. And by clearing these challenges, uh, you are able to move to the next step uh, or uh, move a little higher in the mountain towards the summit. Global warming, of course, uh, might have started uh, uh, by tackling individual uh, questions. Uh, but after having solved uh, one question, uh, you face a bigger challenge. That is precisely the issue involving the global warming. The research topic and the approaches uh, might uh, become different, but I don't think uh, there is uh, um, a limit uh, to science and technology uh, and the research that need to be done. So I uh, wish uh, the young people the best of their luck uh, in being successful in their research. So uh, in Kyushu University, there is the Inter International Institute for Carbon Neutral Energy Research working on photovoltaics and fuel cells. Uh, studying the CO2 and uh, how to sequestrate or, or reduce CO2 from atmosphere. Uh, I'm uh, working as a visiting professor at this in institute, occupying uh, an, a little part of this building, but uh, we are trying to think uh, seriously as to what challenges we would like to see uh, the future uh, generation of researchers engage in. The sense of excitement uh, that I have felt uh, for research is something that I still maintain. I have never lost that. And I am very thankful for the fact that uh, I have been awarded this Kyoto Prize uh, for things that I have done with great joy. I thank you very much uh, for your attention. Thank you very much. A bouquet of flowers will now be presented to Dr. Kunitake. Thank you very much. Please give a big applause once again to Dr. Kunitake.